boys and girls, welcome to the prologue to the start of Race 3, aka the Tomb of Amaskat arc. There's so much to talk about with regards to this big upcoming raids content, like what we know so far based on Jagex's promotions, and also upcoming rewards which we are enthusiastically looking forward to. But before I go heavy on discussing all these things, we will be making some progress on Iron Bar in preparation for Race 3. The first thing we have to do is finish Beneath Curse Sands to unlock some very useful items and perks for Race 3 and general preparations for Race 3. This will be a massive arc, so sit back and enjoy this new journey on Iron Bar. If you are excited, make sure to like this video to let me know and subscribe for the epic journey in the desert coming very soon. Alright, so there's some new updates. New Race 3 quests. Race 3 isn't out yet, but they're just kind of, you know, built in the hype for it, I guess. And another update that came along with the desert themed is Feral Scepter. Okay, so it's only seven charges right now, but apparently I have the uh, Desert Elite Diaries. If I charge it again, it should go to 100, so. Alright, there you go. Let's check. Should be a. Uh, there we go, 100. Nice. Alright, it's time to do this new quest. It should be around here somewhere. Is there a way? Oh, I don't know where these teleports go. This one? I feel like this one goes to the other pyramid. Oh, nope. Ah, no. Ah, I hate these, man. Just give it. Give me the English name, bro. <laughs> okay, so it was the middle one. Hit east from Sofia and you'll find a camp by the cliffs. Okay. Uh. Oh, they already added the race three area. I remember this place used to exist, though, back in the original game. You had to fight like there was like a good spot for a slayer task here. All the locust riders and stuff. Did they still exist? Uh, no, they're just locusts now. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing this is the obelisk for the scepter, right? Oh, nice! I unlocked the new teleport. Oh, damn! Dude, this guy's got like some Amaterasu shit going on. Damn, even the blowpipe hits really well on this guy. Yeah, damn. Definitely range this boss. Holy shit. I could... I was struggling to hit with melee. There we go. Finally. So, okay. Well, we're pretty much ready to go. I got my teleport to race 3 area, so... Alright, so I also got this upgraded Keras. It's not even, like, the truly end, you know, end upgrade. This is only, like, the second form because we're gonna get some uh new items from race three eventually that you use on the caress to make it even stronger so this is like this is better caress i guess so let's do a few kills with uh with the caress at kelfi queen off task just see what it's like you know i landed a crazy amount of spec so i'm just gonna melee this whole fight i think let's just melee the whole fight and see what we can hit Yo, this thing is so hard to proc the special. I am hitting, though. Some, like, 50s off task, so that's pretty good. But I'm waiting for, like, a critical hit. Dang, I'm just not hitting now if I don't hit my Warhammer. Ooh, 72. There we go. I just hit a crit. Damn, I just hit a 56 without the special effect, which means... Ooh, I just hit a 93. Holy shit, that was sick. Um, I think it can do three times the damage of my base, right? So I hit a 56 base right there. So I would be able to hit like 168 right there. And that's off task. So if I was on task, oh my god. Oh, 84. There we go. Uh, it does pretty okay on, on the melee. It does pretty okay on the second phase too. I didn't let a single Warhammer on this kill, so... Oh, what? 165. Oh my freaking god. That was insane. I can't believe I actually hit it. That would have been 55 as a base. And then three times that. Oh my god. So based on my testing, the Curse Partisan, without the orbs that you get from Race 3, it's still incredibly good at Calfight Queen. If you don't have a Mace or a Scythe, this will definitely be your best weapon. It should easily beat the Bludgeon, especially if you're on task and if you land a spec with a Warhammer, for example. But yeah, I'd say right now it's 
currently the second or third best out of all your options and it might be the best once race 3 orbs come out if you can afford it. Do you guys remember any of your recent passwords on your online accounts? It's a no. Oftentimes we go through huge hassles trying to log back into our Google account, Netflix, or even our RuneScape accounts. What we really need is NordPass. NordPass is the premier service that will make your digital life tremendously easier. NordPass allows us to store all of our private account information through secure encrypted technology so that you can log into all your accounts hassle-free and not worry about prying eyes. It also can generate strong passwords for when you have to make future accounts and encrypt and store that information for easy future use. Also, NordPass allows you to sync up to six devices, so it's easy to access all your accounts on all your devices. It's important to keep your account information tidy and secure because more of our livelihood depends on it. Keep yourself safe and stress-free using NordPass and get a special deal by downloading it using my link below. In terms of race 3 preparation gear wise, we're pretty damn good. The only two BIS that I'm potentially missing that might be good there is Spectral and the Harm Staff. But other than that, everything else I pretty much have from all the raids, 1 and 2 drops to all the next drops, Nightmare drops, um, all the Slayer drops, you name it. So we're pretty set on that. Now, we're currently stocking up on the potions as I mentioned. So I will give you an update in a bit once the potions uh, are finally bolstered but things like rune i think i'm good you need soul runes for the new staff and i got 350k so that's pretty good uh blood runes i have 100k so it should be fine i'll definitely make one if i need and now we have the rune crafting outfit so it's a lot faster because you get 60 percent more for the same amount of time so other than that i mean ammunition and with this arrows though we're plenty good i have like probably 100 plus thousand more i can make so 50k is good for now yeah, otherwise, we're pretty good. Uh, hard food, we're good on that as well. Plenty of Karen Bonds, Anglers, so... And easy to get more if I need, so... Alrighty, time to spend some money. This is gonna cost me about a mil. Actually, more than that, two mil. To clean this, that's gonna cost like a mil. Yep, and then to... Make them finish pots is another mil. Plus, oh man. Oh yes, giant egg sack. Let's go. <laughs> Fun way to prep on stream. Uh, killing Seracnus for collection log and spider eggs. Yeah. Oh wow, speaking of the cudgel. <laughs> I freaking got it, dude. Let's go. A hey, nice collection log slot. Nice. Well, I guess all that's left is the pet, right? <gasps> oh! <laughs> Out of all the uniques is is a dupe jar of eyes. You gotta be kidding me. So I am getting about 250 red spider eggs an hour on average here at around 40-ish kills. Now it's nowhere as good as Tower of Life, but Seracnus gives a lot of good clue scrolls for master clues and pet of course. So really good collection log related stuff too. And fun way to get spider eggs. Yeah, good luck. Oh, just hit 500k CS Seracnus. What's the pet rate? Like one in um, 2k, 3k? I guess I'll just use the Blood Fury. Oh, wow. Okay, I keep my max save with the Blood Fury, though. That's sick. I can heal and not feel bad about my kills. Because it should still be around the same. Oh, I reached it. Nice, dude. The Howley got that reach, man. It's very strategic here. I, I like it more than Claws overall. Definitely. Right? Oh, wow. That was so good. Okay. I can definitely enjoy uh, mastering Crystal Halley here. That was so sick. You saw that? Sweet, sweet. We got enough red spider eggs from Seracnus to do this 1,000. Let's go. Nice. That was so satisfying. 1,100. So I went ahead and grabbed the rabbit's foot necklace finally because I'm just literally AFKing at bird houses, getting bird nests. And with the rabbit's foot, you get a slightly increased chance of getting god eggs in your bird nest, which is good for a collection log. So I might as well. All right. Made all the restores now. And all that's left is my 1,000 toe flax potions. So I need about 800 more bird nests. And I did some rough math. At 80 jambo kills an hour, which is about 250 burst nests, it'll take me like three hours to get all I need. So in four hours, I can get a thousand. 
All right, that should be it. Yep, 80 kills an hour. Yep, <laughs> so right on the money. 218 kills, so that should be about 600 uh, burst nests from that. Yep, we will get the pet eventually if Jagex keeps making me use all these goddamn brewers. On the right side, I finally finished making all my goddamn potions for race 3. 2,404 dose restores, 2,404 dose brewers. That's the most I've ever had in years. Um, yeah, we got like a thousand super combats, thousand range bots, 1.7k prayer potion. And that about concludes all of the race 3 prep. I think I have enough food, potions, ammunition, and of course gear. So yeah, now we just chill, do some collection log stuff, and wait till race 3 comes out in a week. Let's open these up, boys. Let's see what the first one's looking like. Let's let's just be quick about this one. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! My first new kit. Oh my fucking god. Let's go. It's been like how many master clues, dude? Holy moly. The curse is broken. Finally. For the longest time, we've only ever had these kits only. Anguish. Alright, well. And the last one, yeah, yeah, see. Oh, this one's 444k. I think this one would have been uh, over a mil. I think 1.1 or 1.2 mil might be like the, the the middle ground. Ooh, these palm nut sacks. Hell yeah, I just got a Kraken task, but uh, yeah. Let's uh, use the tor Torment Kit on the... Ooh, bracelet, let's go. Hell yeah, that looks nice. It looks a, a bit more finesse. You couldn't really see the bracelet before. But with the kit, you can actually see the the Zenites really blinging out. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, Ancient Page? Wait, what? That's a collection log? Hey, I just thought it was Strand Full Helm and, and that was it. But apparently, uh, it's got like 20 plus items that you can uh, fill in your log. Okay, all right. Definitely do more of these. So I burned 11 Chew Bones just now for the Strand Full Helm chance. Got nothing, so that's like 70 total. I did like 40 pre-counter, but yeah, we're still not on the rate, but who knows, maybe get lucky in the future. There we go. <gasps> oh, oh my god, torture? <laughs> this is fucking amazing, dude. Holy shit, we are, wow, the ornament kids are finally coming in, dude. First torture kit, are you kidding me, dude? 457. And now we can put this on here. Yo. That's also another collection log slot, too. We're getting a little closer to 600. Yo, we did it though. Uh, basically, we did an hour, we got 20 kills an hour. So that's a PB for me. I think it's possible to maybe reach 29 kills an hour, but I gotta be really good though and not making mistakes. But I only do this like streaming though. So this is probably gonna be as good as it gets for now. Oh, okay. Well, Hydro Leather. Huh? Honestly, I haven't seen any uniques other than, other than ring pieces. In like forever, so I'll take those. We'll take those, we'll take those. Oh shit, I got poisoned. Damn it. I should have went the other way. I overstayed anyways. <laughs> Damn, I've been here for like almost two hours. Holy shit, that was close. <laughs> Alright guys. We're uh, literally 300-ish away from 200 mil so i'm gonna leave now because uh apparently the viewers want to meet up so any any account period here it is whoa we got it but there's no music i'm disappointed jagex you really need to add music but there it is 200 mil range so it is very weird for me to not get range xp anymore like the range xp you see it has a cancel sign next to it because I'm not gaining anything anymore. This is my first time getting 200 mil XP. It is cool, but it is also kind of sad that uh, I just can't get that XP anymore, you know? And also have to get used to the XP numbers too. I know what I'll do. Unblock Black Demons so that I can get Black Demons for Demonic Gorillas because I need to fill all that again. We got another Sire task, which is good for collection long stuff, but this time I want to go back to a more traditional method where you just stay at the boss and not use the house. And with this method, I was really only getting like 30 kills tops. 
And I think if I were to do more and more of it, I might be able to pull off an extra few kills an hour. But the cost difference with this method is dumb. You just use way more blood runes with this method and you don't get much more kills an hour. You have to try really hard to do that. So I only do this method once in a while. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go. Oh, dude, we're just going to make another bludgeon, I guess. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go. All right. Number two. Oh my god, Abyssal Head, no. Let's talk about what we know based on all the promotional videos and blog posts Jagex has put out. Things like boss mechanics and how we will best tackle Rage 3. We won't know until it comes out. Let's talk about the rewards though. I will list all the rewards but cover more in depth on the main ones. So Tomb of Amiscot will drop the following uniques. The three pieces of Missouri Range armor set. The Shadow of Tumikin, the Ward of El Dennis, the Osmuntin's Fang, I'm probably saying some of these wrong, Lightbearer Ring, the Thread of El Dennis, and the Three Curves Parison Jewels. In my opinion, before I expand on what these drops do, the big ticket items are definitely going to be the Shadow of Tumikin, the Missouri Armor Set, and the Ward of El Dennis. The other items are all best in slots too, but they're definitely a lot more niche use items. The Shadow of Tumikin is essentially the magic equivalent to the Twisted Bow and the Scythe of Vitter. It has a built-in spell like the Trident, and its base damage is scaled similar to the Trident and the Sang Staff. Its base max hit is a 34 if you're 99 magic, and the base accuracy is 35. Also, the Shadow has an additional modifier where your gear's magic damage will be tripled up to 100% damage cap, and your accuracy will be tripled with no cap. This weapon with good magic gear will easily surpass even the Twisted Bow in certain places like God Wars, and will easily be a core weapon for many endgame players for various PVM situations like Raids 1. It will also replace the standard trident saying harm in many places where those are normally the best weapons like Azora or Kraken. Each cast of the shadow will cost 1 soul and 3 chaos runes. Next is the Ward of Elodinus. It will be the strongest mace shield requiring the arcane spear shield, the previous BIS mace shield, as the component to make it. It has 25 magic accuracy and 5% magic damage. No shield has magic damage previously, making the Ward of Elodinus significantly better than previous shields. It will be very desirable to bring this item if one-handed mage weapons are needed, definitely for like Slayer tasks with Ancient Magics or like Theory of Blood if you're mage rolled, and I'm sure some other situations too. The Missouri Armor Set will completely replace Armadale just like how Torva completely replaces Bandos. Assuming you actually have it, of course. <laughs> Do not worry when I say that, it's not going to be something the average player can just easily replace. So keep that in mind. It will require full Armadale to make the Missouri Set. The Missouri Armor has 8 range strength compared to Armadale 0, which makes it significantly better than Armadale in more than just accuracy and defense, also offensively. Missouri will give new max hits for all ranged weapons which will push things, especially the blowpipe and the twisted bow, even further. The set also has 19 more range accuracy than Armadale and stronger defenses overall. The other items are complicated to explain so I think those are best to cover as I get them since it's gonna make this video probably a bit too dragged out. The information on all these items will be linked in the description though, if you want to learn more about them now. But TLDR, all these items will be useful for me on Iron Bar, so they will all be goals for my Race 3 grind, and not just for collection log purposes. Alright, let's talk a little bit about the raid itself, the basic idea of how it works, and the bosses. So we don't know a whole lot about mechanical challenges of the tomb itself, and it's for the better since that means it will make for an exciting challenge to learn how to overcome it. But the raid allows up to 8 players to participate in a group and you can customize the difficulty through invocations, which is basically different types of handicaps. Adding handicaps will raise the overall difficulty level. The level 0 through 150 is considered easy mode, so probably like 
easy mode for TOB, like the practice mode. 150 to 300 level is considered normal mode. And anything past 300 is hard mode. So right off the bat, we basically already have a hard mode for this raid. I will probably just add enough invocations to start doing the normal mode and slowly increase the level with my team until we hit a brick wall and gradually go up as we improve on our strategies. Higher difficulty raids will affect the overall chance of uniques, so we're definitely going to try to reach as high difficulty as possible. As far as bosses, we know the four sub bosses. The final boss won't be revealed until probably release day or whichever team will be the first to reach that boss to document it to the public. The race theme this time is definitely based on the desert storyline with the devourer character attempting to become a god. The four bosses we know are Akka, the humanoid boss, Baba, the bamboon boss, Kefri, the cow fight boss, and Zebek, the crocodile boss. We have plenty of visuals of the boss mechanics found in their promotions, but there's no way to tell what they actually do. Jagex is known to troll with their promotions often, showing false setups of people doing the combat in the trailer. So there's no point in speculating what's good to bring based on these videos. It's most likely a troll, guys. I will say, however, things like a twisted bow, a scythe, blowpipe, and your standard best in slot armor like Bandos, Torva, or, you know, Armadale, it's definitely a safe bet. Now, the real question is, what kind of niche items do we need to bring? Leave your ideas in the comment section. It will be some interesting discussions.